Emergency Medical Minute presents Mental Health Monthly. Substance-induced psychosis, the agitated geriatric patient, manic episodes, paramedics, nurses, mid-level providers, and physicians in the ED all regularly have to manage patients with psychiatric conditions, often with limited training and resources. In this series, psychiatric experts keep it real, raw, and relevant about what you need to know to successfully care for these patients in an emergency setting. Hi, I'm Kim Nordstrom. I'm an emergency psychiatrist and associate professor with the Department of Psychiatry at the University of Colorado. And today we're going to talk about psychosis and agitation in the elderly ED patient. So on a typical day in the ED, uh, common presentations for elderly patients when they present with psych symptoms tend to be in two large buckets, depression or psychosis. Depression, a lot of times they'll show with failure to thrive. They may be suicidal, or just as likely they may have a medical complaint with occult depression. Over in in the psychosis realm, they may present with aggression, agitation, or problematic behaviors hallucinations, delusions. I'm often asked, could this be new onset schizophrenia? Hmm. Well, let's focus on psychosis and agitation. With a person with a well-established psychotic disorder, so they have a history of schizophrenia, depression with psychotic features, bipolar disorder with psychosis, it's best to understand the reason for the exacerbation. Are they off their meds? Is the medication wearing off earlier? Maybe they've been on the same medication for 20 years and it's just not enough anymore. Or there's always a possibility that the psychotic disorder is totally controlled and the presentation is related to something else. So possibly the person who happens to have schizophrenia also has delirium. So next steps, how, how do I conceptualize this? Well, If the current exacerbation is similar to past exacerbations, I consider primary psych. Unless there's some kind of overt findings, the vitals are awry or the blood glucose is in a problematic range. But if those aren't the case, I'm probably going to think that this is just an exacerbation of the pre-existing psychotic disorder. But if the exacerbation, if how the person's presenting is different than past exacerbations, I'm going to assume it's medical. So how about that person with new onset psychosis later in life? And it's not all that uncommon if we use a broad definition. So if we imagine psychosis as an impairment of reality testing, causing cognitive and or behavioral disturbances, and often manifested as delusions and or hallucinations, that happens fairly often. And causes are much more likely to be non-psychiatric. So imagine temporal or frontal degeneration, so thinking dementia, Delirium, acute illness, or metabolic derangement, or other causes. It could just be that the person is having sensory deficits, and it's not psychosis at all, but it's in fact, it's illusions or uh, misperceptions associated with vision change or tinnitus. Also be thinking in this population, polypharmacy, drug-drug interactions, but also there are changes in pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics that affect med response and increase the risk for delirium. And then do not discount the fact that substance use disorder might be a part of this. So what does that busy emergency physician do to um, imagine all of this? Is, is Are there tools out there that can be helpful in conceptualizing this? And The answer is yes. So back in, I believe it's 2018, the Coalition on Psychiatric Emergencies, which is a subset of, or I guess the sponsoring organization is ASEP, they formed a work group to develop an easy point, uh, easy to use point of care tool. The uh, article that came out of this is called Managing Delirium and Agitation in the Elderly ED Patient. And the tool is called the ADEPT tool, A-D-E-P-T. So as you work through the tool, it forces the clinician to examine causes of delirium, usually presenting as new onset psychosis. So let's talk about the tool. And by the way, you can find this tool on the ASEP website in their patient care section. The tool describes fundamental principles necessary for quality emergency care for older adults presenting with agitation, confusion, or new onset psychosis. The ADEP uh, mnemonic stands for A- assess, D, diagnose, E, evaluate, P, prevent, 
and T, treat. So looking at the tool, go in there and the first being assess. Well, this is your bread and butter. You guys are great at this. You perform a thorough evaluation to determine the underlying cause. You do your history, medication review. And as, as I'm sure you know, in this population, you really need to get collateral information, be it through the nursing home, family, friends. And then, of course, you perform a thorough physical exam. Next, it's important to diagnose. So the first piece of this part of the tool, the diagnose section, screens for delirium in that agitated or confused older patient. And there are several tools embedded. The tools that really make a lot of sense for that very busy emergency physician are the DTS and the BCAM. The DTS is a delirium triage screen, and it's a calculator. It takes 20 seconds to administer and requires no collateral. It is highly sensitive. In fact, it's considered 98% sensitive. So it's a great rule out test. So no means no, but yes means maybe. So if it looks like the person is, is positive on the delirium triage screen, it doesn't mean they have delirium. So it's important then to follow up with the BCAM, which is the brief confusion assessment method. This takes a minute, but it does take collateral. The BCAM is highly specific rule in test. So if they're positive on the DTS and then positive on the BCAM, you can feel pretty confident that the person does have delirium. Next, if the answer is no to delirium, you also have on the next part of this diagnose section is to screen for major neurocognitive disorder, so dementia. And in that, it has the mini-cog embedded. Next, you go to evaluate. So you have a sense now that the person has, say, delirium. Well, what do you need to do? you got to find out why they have delirium. Where is it coming from? So that's where you perform thorough, focused medical workup for agitation or confusion. There's a number of ideas that are noted in this. I think everybody supports that just doing blanket labs or studies doesn't make sense, that they should be directed based on what information you already have at hand. They do note general tests for most patients, and then they also note specific targeted testing and other evaluation. Next, they go into prevent. So prevent really focuses on what you can do in the ED to help not, you know, further worsen the person's state. So obviously, in the individual patient uh, piece of this, you want to treat the underlying disorders. You want to treat pain, nausea, or constipation. And you want to also consider avoiding tethers unless you really need to have them in place. Does the person need to have their blood pressure checked every 15 minutes? Because that can definitely cause agitation. Also, the urinary catheter, it's another tether. And if it's not necessary, you might want to consider avoiding it. Also unprevent, uh, they, they talk about things that the hospital or the system can do to help the patient. And some of this is to have tools in place to help with reassurance, redirection, and activities. So some EDs have things called busy vests that allow for small activities for the person to be doing as they're in their room, in their bed. Also, things that you can have nearby to help with self-orientation, clock, calendar. If you have a whiteboard in the room, make sure you're actually updating it each day with the correct date, with the correct team names. And then lastly in this area, imagining preventing injury. So lowering the beds, maybe making sure that the rails are on the beds, those kind of things. So this is a nice piece of the tool that has you think about ways that you can help the person from getting worse while they're getting treated. Next is in terms of the treatment for that agitation. Think in terms of a multimodal approach to treatment. It's important not to go right to medicine. Can you use verbal de-escalation? If you do need to start a medicine, start with oral medicines and be careful when you're considering the use of IM or IV medications. Of course, avoid benzodiazepines if at all possible, unless you think the person could be in benzodiazepine withdrawal. Also be mindful of anticholinergics. 
and be cautious to prevent harm and minimize side effects as you're considering the medication usage. So that's a quick introduction to the ADEPT tool, which will help you consider steps in managing the newly agitated, psychotic, elderly patient. Thank you. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Health One Continental Division and Swedish Medical Center for their financial contributions to the EMM. Donations from them and listeners like you make it possible for us to fulfill our mission of producing and spreading free medical education to the masses. If you enjoy our show, please consider making a one-time or reoccurring donation to help cover our operational costs and keep the EMM awesome. Click on the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you for listening.